Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to upgrade the crank set on my 2022 uh, Ibis Ripley. Um, I picked the bike up this past fall. I haven't had a lot of time to ride it now that winter's here, but it came with the uh, SRAM NX GX drivetrain build kit. The NX crank set works just fine, but I'm trying to learn more and do more um, with my bikes as far as being able to upgrade things myself and just learn how to do more things. Changing out a crank set is something I haven't done yet. Um, I recently put on a couple new dropper posts on our bikes um, and I actually changed out the shift lever um, on, this, on this particular bike. Just so happened to have an NX crank set off another bike. And um, been kind of nice because I can actually see how it works um, before starting to work on the uh, bike I'm going to be doing the upgrade on. Basically, there's just two pieces to it. Um, you got the crank arm uh, drive side with the chain ring, and then on the other side, it's using what they call dub technology. SRAM calls dub technology, but it has an eight mil. Allen key there. And then on the inside, as you'll notice, it's got a, a bolt. Um, so when you turn this Allen key, it's actually turning this bolt in, on the inside, and it actually has some threads in it. It's threaded. The other piece, the non drive side, it just has these notches, and it key fits in here and just kind of keys in like so. So it's keyed. It's pretty hard to mess up the orientation. I mean, you can, but it's it's pretty easy to, to line it up properly. And on the inside of this, there are threads. You probably can't see it very well in the, in the video here, but the inside of this is threaded where that bolt actually threads into. So when you install this on a bike, this goes in one side of the bottom bracket, this goes in the other side. Line that key up, that, that, those notches of key, keyed set up there, line that up, and then you turn this 8 mil Allen uh, bolt, and it's actually going to thread right into this, and that's how they stick together. <coughs> then you have your preload adjuster, little dial here, and so when you have this on the bike, installed on the bike, um, there may be some space between the bottom bracket and the crank arms. And this little dial here picks up the slack there so that there's no play or gap between the bottom bracket and your cranks. So this dial is just threaded on. You can actually Actually, that actually just spin right off. And then this is threaded here. So there's a plus with an arrow. If you spin this clockwise towards the plus, that moves this preload adjuster toward the bottom bracket. And that fills up any space between the bottom bracket and the crank arm. You turn it anti-clockwise opposite of the plus, the plus sign, and that moves the preload adjuster dial away from the bottom bracket and towards the crank and that will loosen it up and cause some play between the crank arm and the bottom bracket. And that's how, that's the way you would turn it if you were to remove the crank. There's a two mil Allen key bolt in the preload adjuster right here the two mil and so in order to turn this you have to loosen that up a little bit you don't have to take the bolt all the way out but you have to loosen it a little bit and when you're installing it and you're turning it clockwise to reduce that slack you have when you're done once it gets tight then you have to um, tighten down that two mil 
Allen key bolt there on the preload adjuster. So in a nutshell, that's how it works. Um, it's, it's pretty easy when you think about it. It's a pretty slick design. Now this 8 mil bolt I was referring to that essentially pairs these together is on with 54 newton meters. And it says right there, it needs to be torqued down to 54 newton meters when you install it. So when you're removing it, which I'm going to be doing here shortly, you have to keep in mind that's very, very tight. I actually tried removing it with this Park Tool um, 8 mil Allen, Allen wrench. It doesn't have enough um, torque. It's not long enough. It doesn't provide enough torque to get that 50, to break that 54 newton meters. It's, it's on there very tight. I actually had to use my um, breaker bar, which lots like a 24 inch breaker bar, so you're going to get a lot more leverage and a lot more power with an 8 mil um, Allen key adapter. So while I have the crank set off the bike, I'm going to install a bash guard. The bike came pre-installed with an ISCG uh, adapter, which fits right behind the uh, bottom bracket. Um, so that was already pre-installed, that was nice. And I picked up an MRP bash guard. It's for a 32 uh, chain ring, which is what's gonna be on the new crank. Uh, really all the bash guard does is protect your chain ring from being damaged or the teeth from being bent. Say on log overs, for example, if you were to um, hit your chain ring there uh, or you know, rocks or other sorts of thing, trail obstacles. One of the first things you'll notice I did off video ahead of time was remove the pedals. Since this crank is coming, coming off and I'm not going to use it again on this bike, but I'm going to reuse those pedals. It's much easier to get the pedals off the crank ahead of time while it's on the bike than trying to get the pedals off the crank arm once it's been removed. The next thing I did was loosen up the chain. So I got a Tram GX derailleur here. Engage the locking mechanism with that little button there. You pull the derailleur cage forward, hit the little locking button, that slackens the chain. And then you either take the chain completely off or you can set it, you can take it off the front chain ring and set it just directly behind the chain ring because this crank is gonna be pulled out and you don't want the chain attached. Now the next step was to loosen up this preload adjustment dial. So I loosened up this two mil bolt with my two mil Allen key. I loosened it up enough that I could turn this preload adjuster counterclockwise to loosen it up. Then take the bolt all the way out. Um, I've seen some other YouTube videos where they indicate that this will stop if you loosen it up enough. Mine never did, but I've got it loosened up as much as going to get loosened. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in order to get the crank off, you have to use this 8 mil Allen key. But this bolt's tightened to 54 Newton meters. It's very tight. And a small wrench like this may not have enough torque or leverage to untighten that. So, ordinarily, you would stick this in the crank, and you would hold the other side of the crank arm, the non-drive side, to keep it from moving, and you would turn this Allen key counterclockwise to free up that bolt. However, I didn't have enough torque or leverage with the small Allen key. So I'll show you what I ended up doing here. To prevent this non-drive side crank from turning or having to hold that while I'm trying to turn the drive side Allen wrench, I put some blocks under the non-drive side, non side um, crank. That stops it from turning, so I don't have to hold it myself or have someone else hold it. Then I took my breaker bar with eight mil, with the eight mil uh, 
Allen key adapter and use that and use, use the breaker bar with all the leverage to loosen up that crank bolt. Once you've got it loosened up enough, you can go back to your normal Allen key, eight mil Allen key. There we go. And there we go, we got her off. I'm gonna set the chain down. Move this in a little bit closer and you can see the ICSG tab here, this adapter. It's got three bolts, one here. It's actually installed right behind the threaded bottom bracket. And that's what I'm gonna attach the bash guard to. One thing to be really mindful of is there are there can be spacers pressed into the bottom bracket, these bottom bracket cups. And this one does have a spacer in it, I can tell. And so you want to be sure you got the right orientation. They just press back in. They just fit here and they just push in to this bottom bracket shell. But you want to make sure you have the right orientation. Um, once this, the other side of this drive, um, once the other side of this crank arm comes off, the spindle will come all the way out that it's attached to, and that spacer may fall out of place. So you wanna make sure you know what orientation it's in. And I can tell that it's got, um, it says dub on the outside. So I wanna keep note of that, that it goes back in with the dub writing facing the outside. Some bikes have spacers, some don't. From what I've heard, they, there can be spacers on both sides even. Um, and you have to go out to the SRAM website to determine um, based on your bottom bracket width and the bottom bracket and the sh bottom bracket threaded shell that you're using. What if any spacers you need? Because they come in different sizes. Now for me, I'm hoping that I can just continue to use the same spacer that's on there because I'm switching out a SRAM NX with a SRAM GX crank and they're very similar. And I've already looked this up on the SRAM website chart, which I'll put a link to in the description. So I need to take out the crank spindle and the non-drive side crank arm, which are attached together. I'm just gonna get myself a rubber mallet. Don't use a metal mallet. You want something that's soft and you don't want to tap on it too hard, but just, you know, go ahead and hold on to the non-drive side crank just to get this out of here. Pretty easy. So the batch guard comes with four bolts. I'm only going to need three of them with this particular adapter. Only three spots for them. And then it comes with a few little washers. Gonna add a small bit of Loctite. So the bolts, they kind of have a flange to them and so does where you install the bolt. So the bolt goes in and then the, on the outside without the washer and the washer goes on the inside. I'm gonna tighten these down a little ways, but not the entire ways. So it gives me a little room to move it, to adjust it. Hold my crank up here where it would normally go in. Make sure it covers the bottom of the entire chain ring. I looked up the um, product manual on this particular bash guard online it wasn't real informative and it didn't have the torque or newton meter spec another guy online mentioned somewhere between four to seven was his guess so i'm going to leave it somewhere around there probably get my torque wrench out set it to 
maybe around five. There's five. So one thing um, you might want to check, and mine's completely fine here, but make sure you when you tighten these down, make sure there's not going to be any issues with the bash, any part of the bash guard touching the frame or like the frame protector, any part of your frame, I guess. All right, so I have the new crank and spindle. This is the non-drive side. I've, the preload adjuster, I've already made sure is um, turned counterclockwise to its loosest position. There's a little bit of, there's a, there's a cap at the end of this that you have to take off. I'm gonna add a little bit of grease to this. Um, there's plenty in here from the previous install, but I'm gonna add a little Park Tool high performance grease, just something I have on hand. All right, so I've greased the spindle, the splines, and then inside here with the threaded, with the threads, it looks like they've already, the manufacturer, they've already, they've already greased that up pretty well. Make sure that spacer I was talking about is still in place and then get pushed out. There, I had to seat it just a little bit on that bottom bracket spacer. So I got the drive side crank and chain ring that already comes pre-installed together in the box, out of the box. And I noticed it did have some grease in here where that, uh, that threaded bolt bolt is. I've added some additional just on the outside here. I don't know if it really makes much difference. But uh, yeah. So now I'm going to bring this drive side crank up here. Make sure it's aligned with the other side properly. Got it hand tight. Um, the crank ring looks like the bash guard's lined up real well here under the chain ring. And um, not interfering with the, the chain ring at all. So one thing I noticed is that the bash guard came with three longer screws and one shorter screw. And the shorter screw is the one you need on, potentially need on the top, in my case, it's probably the preferred one because it goes, when it threads all the way through, it gets very close to the frame on the inside. So if you torque that thing down, it could scratch the frame. Now in my case, it didn't, thankfully, but I'm gonna, I back this screw out and I'm gonna stick the smaller one in. All right, so I'm gonna use my torque wrench, um, torque this down to around 50 Newton meters. Actually, it's 54 Newton meters, but you know, somewhere in that range. That's the spec, 54 Newton meters. Come back to the other side and tighten up that preload. Um, then take a rubber mallet on the drive side and just make sure there's no um, slack or space between the bottom bracket and the, the crank on the drive side. You're gonna turn this you're gonna turn this dial towards the plus. It doesn't have to be overly tight I don't think because it does affect the way it spins. Then use that two mil Allen key and tighten up that bolt. It doesn't have to be overly tight, I don't think. Just snug. You don't want to over tighten it. Chain back on. Undo the, the lock clutch, clutch mechanism just by moving the driller forward. There we go. So thanks for checking out the video today. Um, it was fun learning how to put a crank set in, trying something new. 
um, doing a little bit more, putting a little bit more in my toolbox as far as what I can do on my own. And uh, I just figured maybe someone else could get something out of this along the way as well. So if you have anything, comments or questions, feel free to post them below and we'll catch you on the next one. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps the channel and promote Iowa trails. Get out and ride.